up, but we begin with the latest on the effort to prevent terrorist attacks at home and abroad. Police are searching right now for two suicide bombers in Europe, and the dome of the German parliament has been closed because of threats there. Brian Ross will have more on that in just a minute, but first let's go to Sharon Alfonsi live at LaGuardia Airport here in New York. Sharon? Good morning, George. Well, the TSA was certainly hoping to have those kinks ironed out by the Thanksgiving rush, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. We're hearing from kids, cancer survivors, even senior citizens who say they were humiliated and worse by the TSA. Across the country, the stories are rolling in. Thomas Sawyer, a bladder cancer survivor, says he was humiliated after a pat-down broke his urostomy bag, leaving the 61-year-old covered in his own urine. This after warning them twice that touching the bag could break the seal. I was so embarrassed and so petrified of going out into the airport thinking people would see me and quote-unquote smell me. My underwear had been dropped to the floor. I'm standing in front of them with my underwear and had to ask to pull it up. Kathy Bossy, a longtime flight attendant and breast cancer survivor, says the TSA made her take out her prosthetic breast. She put her full hand on my breast and said, what is this? And I said, it's a prosthesis because I've had breast cancer. And she goes, well, you'll need to show me that. And Carolyn Durand, an ABC employee, says she's never experienced screening this intrusive. The woman who checked me reached her hands inside my underwear and felt her way around. It was basically worse than going to the gynecologist. It was embarrassing, it was demeaning, it was inappropriate. And now this video of a father taking off his young son's shirt for a pat down has become a YouTube sensation. For the first time in the post 9-11 environment, travelers are now saying they're willing to discuss risk. They're willing to discuss trade-offs. That's a discussion we need to have. This morning, the TSA is promising to make screening as, quote, minimally invasive as possible after a weekend of White House pressure. What I've said to the TSA is that you have to constantly refine and uh, measure whether what we're doing uh, is the only way to assure the American people's safety. Would you submit to one of these pat-downs? Not, not if I could avoid it. <laughs> no, I mean, who would? For their part, TSA officers say they've been screamed at, even punched for following policy. And this weekend, Saturday Night Live took their shot. Do you want to feel contact in certain special places? Then why not go through security at an airport? <laughs> the TSA, it's our business to touch yours. And a lot of people are getting to airports and they're saying, what's the big deal? They're not seeing any big changes. That's because about 80% of airports don't have these scanners, so you're not having the scanner or the pat down. So you might fly out of one airport, everything's normal like it used to be, but flying out of another could be a whole different ball game that is adding to the confusion. Robin? Yeah, the lack of consistency. All right, Sharon. You know, so much to talk about on the terrorism front. And joining us now from Washington is the administrator of the TSA, John Pistol. Mr. Pistol, thank you very much for being with morning, us Robin. this morning. I know how, how trying these times are right now. And in addition to what Brian Ross was just reporting, are there any specific, credible, recent threats that are causing what some believe to be these invasive, invasive screening tactics? Well, Robin, we know the threats are real, and we have seen this latest information coming out of Al-Qaeda and Arabian Peninsula with their magazine describing the, the detail that they went into in terms of concealing, disguising, and shipping the, the two go, cargo packages uh, out of Yemen end of last month. I don't want to tell you how upset people are, and some that are saying that TSA agents are even going in their underwear as part of the screening process. Is there ever any circumstance where that is warranted? No, no, there should never be a, a situation where that happens. So what happens, what kind of recourse do you have if they do these things that people are saying? Well, again, the, the security officers are there to protect the, the traveling public, and there are specific standard operating protocols which they are to, to follow. And the same with the advanced imaging technology, the walk-through metal detectors, all these different layers of security that we have, there are specific um, standard operating protocols that they follow. Administrator Pistol, there's been a lot of back and forth on whether or not the TSA, you're willing to adapt these recent policies. Can you clear up for us once and for all this morning? Are you willing to adapt? Are you going to change it? 
Yeah, so Robin, the, the bottom line is we, we are always ad, uh, adapting uh, and adjusting our protocols in, in view of the intelligence and in view of the latest uh, information we have about how the terrorists are trying to kill our people on airplanes. Uh, we're also, I'm also very uh, aware of all the concerns that have been raised um, by the traveling public, um, obviously by members of Congress and others, and so yes, we are uh, constantly adapting. So what I uh, am doing is going back and looking at are there less invasive, in, less invasive ways of doing the same type of screening. So you may change the pat-down procedure. What I would say is we are constantly evolving to address the latest threats in intelligence and if that means that we need to adjust uh, those procedures then of course open to that. And you know on Wednesday there are some that are calling that they are going to opt for the pat down to create um, chaos and, to, and, and, and in essence in protest. Do you have enough TSA agents? Are you prepared for that kind of scenario? Well, we're fully staffed, obviously, for this entire week, and we know uh, over this really 10 to 12 day travel period now for, for Thanksgiving. So we're fully staffed, and what, again, come back to the partnership that we hope for with the vast majority of people who want to simply get home. Brian Ross asked me this question before I was going to sit down and talk with you, sir, about the congestion now in the screening areas because of people opting for the pat down and all the confusion and that is creating such congestion that that is a concern that the amount of people there in an area where there is no security that that could lead to something catastrophic well of course we uh, work very closely with the uh, airport police in, in each airport uh, the key is how can we best uh, affect the security when people get to the checkpoint and if people choose to opt out uh, of the advanced imaging technology because they're trying to slow down the process then I feel bad for the people who are simply again wanting to get home for the holidays that they would be delayed because of, of that. Administrator John Pistol, thank you very much. I know it's a, another one of those weeks for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Robin. Take care. I had to go through security at the Miami airport earlier last week, JFK last night, and it is just bedlam. It is, but he sure did signal to you that they're going to be revising these yes. policies. And remember, when they got under fire over the policies on pilots, they did change them over the weekend. So we'll see what happens.